This is the first lecture on chapter 30 of Miguel Roig Francoli's theory textbook, Harmony in Context. I'm going to be talking to you today about the German Romantic Lied, or art song, and I'll be also speaking about Romanticism more generally. I'm going to share my screen with you and put up a handout that I have distributed to you about Romanticism and the German Romantic Lied. Uh, one of the most important genres of music in the 19th century is the art song, and the German word for art song is Lied, L-I-E-D, and we write it with a capital L. The plural of this word is Lieder, because that's the way that the plural is made of that word in German. The typical German Lied is a chamber piece for one singer and a pianist. And the piano part is more than merely an accompaniment. The piano part is usually just as important as the vocal part is in the composition. The art song gave composers of the 19th century a vehicle to express significant emotions and to experiment with some of the newer chromatic harmonies that were becoming popular at the time. The term romanticism is applied to art of all sorts in the 19th century. We can speak of romantic painting, romantic sculpture, romantic poetry, the romantic novel, and of course romantic music as well. Romanticism in all of the arts is characterized by, first of all, a revolt against the rules and norms of classicism. If you think about classical composers like Mozart, Haydn, early Beethoven, their music has an emphasis on symmetry and balance, on the rules of part writing. Their music gives the impression of objectivity and of a clean, well-ordered world. Romanticism is also characterized by emphasis on inner experience and emotion, emphasis on the individual, emphasis on nature, especially its mystical and profound aspects, and emphasis on the irrational. As examples of Romanticism, I have two paintings to show you. This first painting is The Raft of the Medusa by Jean-Louis Théodore Géricault. Um, it depicts survivors of a sh shipwreck. The, the ship called the Medusa went down near Mauritania. This was an actual event. And a group of survivors spent many days on a raft during which time all but a handful perished. You can see that although it's well composed, this is not a classical composition. There's not a very clear sense of, of balance among the different figures that make this up. And mostly what our attention is drawn to is the experience of the individuals in this painting. We can, we're invited to experience their emotions with them and see the, the terror and maybe also the hope on their faces as they see a, sh a ship in the distance. This is a different sort of romantic painting. This is by the German painter Kaspar David Friedrich, and it's called Two Men Contemplating the Moon. This is an example of painting that takes a romantic approach to the landscape, portraying the landscape in an almost magical, mystical way. By situating the viewer behind the two men as they look at the moon, the viewer is invited to enter into the experience of the men and to experience the scene and have this, the same emotions as these two characters are doing. Details like the strangely twisted branches of the tree and the outcropping of rock on either side of the path, as well as the unusual appearance of the moon itself, um, invite us into a place of mystery and contemplation. Um, turning now to Romanticism specifically in music, Romantic music is characterized by its emphasis on emotion and on freedom of form. Also, Romantic music intensely uses chromaticism and chromatic harmony. Miguel Roig Francoli in chapter 30 writes that Romantic composers had an introspective interest in the soul the passions and the inner world of the individual. They often strove for lyrical, intense, poetic expression through music. And those are his italics emphasizing those words. Roig Frankel lists a number of important composers of German Romantic Lieder. 
perhaps the, the first among them, both chronologically and also in terms of uh, his amazing creativity and output, is Franz Schubert. Also Fanny Mendelssohn, Clara Schumann and her husband Robert, Josephine Lang, Pauline Viardot Garcia, Johannes Brahms, Hugo Wolf, Alma Mahler and her first husband Gustav, and Richard Strauss. This is a significant list of Romantic era composers, and notice the large number of women listed among these important composers of the German Romantic lead. The composers of Lieder in German took advantage of a large body of really high quality po poetry that was written by German Romantic poets. Perhaps one of the things that distinguishes these Lieder from earlier songs is, is that the quality of the text that they set is so much higher. Their settings of these poems should be understood as after the fact collaborations between the composer and the poet. The poetry contributes at least as much to the meaning and the interpretation of the work as does the music. Roy Frankely writes, the structure and content of a song's text should as a principle be considered before examining the music. One of the things that we'll often discuss when we talk about this body of art songs is the use of text painting. Text painting is any musical depiction of an object or an idea from the poem in music. So it's a way for composers to give almost a physical impression of what the poem is about painted in the, in the notes of the music. We'll also be talking a good deal about the musical forms that are present in these art songs. Some of the terms that we'll be using to talk about form are strophic form. Strophic form happens when you have multiple verses of a poem and each verse or each stanza is set to the same music. We'll also encounter songs that are in ternary form and songs that are in binary form. And we will encounter songs that are through composed. Through composed music is music where there's no clear repetition of musical material so that the song seems to be composed with new music all the way through. My next two lectures will discuss examples of art song from the beginning of the 19th century and from the end of the 19th century. These are pieces which are not discussed in chapter 30. We will use our class time to actually go over and think about the three songs that are discussed in Roy Frankely's chapter 30. Thank you.